Hey everyone! So I know I'm looking real funny right now, but that's just because I've only got my face makeup on and today's video is going to be another 3 looks 1 palette. I know people seem to really like them and I definitely really enjoy doing them. So today's feature is going to be a palette that I actually initially was going to pass on and it is the Club Nebula from Kaleidos. The inside was really intimidating and is one of the reasons I kind of initially was going to skip. You know I don't really use blues often. For the 3 looks I'm doing, I'm kind of planning on doing one that's more blue green, one that's more red-orange, and then one that combines the two sides. I know, very original, but that's just what we're gonna do. So for today's look, I thought I would start off with doing the blue and green side. Um, so that's gonna be the first look that we're working on in this video. So to kind of just help with making sure everything meshes really well, I'm gonna start off with the shade uh, Naru, and I'm going to use that just to apply lightly all over the lid, kind of to set my eye primer and also to act as a transition shade. The whole palette obviously is super intense. Okay, next I'm gonna take the shade 7 of 9. And I know she said in her video that a lot of these came from like her being like a nerd, but uh, it's all flying over my head. And I'm just kind of putting this on top of the whole eyelid, kind of on top of the uh, previous shade, Naru. So right now I just kind of look a little bit bruised, but I'm sure we can work through it. And I'm just kind of using, I'm deliberately using very little at a time. I know these can get really punchy really quickly, but I don't want to overwhelm myself. So I'm just gonna do light layers. Let's repeat this whole thing on the other eye. So far, this this one is a really nice shade to work with. It arrived shortly before I went off on my little mountain trip, so I didn't have the chance to play with it before sitting down to film. I'm trying to wing the eyeshadow out with a shallower angle this time, so I'm keeping it more close to horizontal. So I'm going to go ahead and take Void. I'm going to try my best to work with it. Press it onto the outer corner of my eye. So you can see the pigmentation is very strong. I'm going to blend it out more later with an actual blending brush. This is just kind of to preliminary set the position. Uh, you know how um, most people, if especially when you have a more standard like Caucasian eye shape, they'll take this eyeshadow, they'll put it in the outer corner, and then they'll sweep it up and along their crease. If you have monolids, I recommend completely inverting the shape. So instead of sweeping it above, sweep it down to your lower lash line. Down to your lash line, kind of like what you see I'm doing here, so that it looks much better. Because if I were to try and sweep it through my orbital bone, it would look terrible. Like I would look like I was just painting on a fake crease or something. Like I would have an awkward line going across here. So I'm just, instead I'm flipping it upside down and I'm gonna just brush it along my lash line instead. It can still look really flattering. Okay, looking good so far. Now I'm gonna take a blending brush and I'm going to use the shade Queen of Blades to add kind of a turquoise edge to this color and I'm gonna use that to blend out these um, this dark blue. And in the process, kind of darkening the whole look up a lot too, I guess. That wasn't really intentional, but I must have put too much on the brush. This shade is also gonna be what I use to blow out the look as well. Okay, so that's what it's looking like right now, and I kind of lost some of the shade void, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop that back in. I always end up over blending. It's just definitely a problem I need to work on improving with regards to my technique. Okay, so I'm bringing back some of that dark blue. It looks fine, I just, I guess I just, I don't know, my eyeshadow technique sometimes is frustrating, like how I feel like I'm just so amateurish at my eyeshadow technique. Okay, so I'm just, I was just trying to try to brush out those harsh edges. I'm gonna you go back to my smaller brush so that I can keep applying void without getting it everywhere. I'm just gonna this time just start really focusing it. And the fallout is actually like, for considering the nature of the shadow, the fallout is definitely pretty minimal. Like I'm getting little to none and I definitely really appreciate that. 
Okay, so I brought back that depth, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and also sweep more of that shade 7 of 9. I'm gonna go ahead and sweep more of that on the inner half of my eye just to kind of see if I can bring back some of that turquoise. I'm gonna put more of that on my lower lash line because it's starting to get really intense. So this is definitely gonna be a really intense look. So I'm gonna start amping up the lower lash line. I usually like don't want to figure out the lower lash line too much because I, I want it to harmonize with the upper lash line. So now that I know, start working on that. What's gonna definitely kind of save this whole look will definitely be adding a metallic. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that. I'm gonna take Astro and I'm gonna put this on my eyelid. And it is, I will say, um, I don't always agree with the mattes from Kaleidos, but I am always down for a metallic from Kaleidos. They are just epic. Um, I don't really have any other eyeshadow in my collection with an effect quite like this. I have some eyeshadows that are super foiled. I have some eyeshadows that look like reflective liquid metal. I have some eyeshadows that look really sparkly. And then I have eyeshadows like this that look galactic is the only word I can explain. It kind of just, it just totally remind, gives me space vibes, galaxy vibes, um, star looks celestial. And Kaleidos is the only brand I've ever seen where the metallics look like that. And I think it's really cool. Like it, it looks like I almost have pressed glitter chunks on my eyes but they're not pressed glitter chunks and they're not even chunky, like they're eye safe. That's kind of the best way to describe it. And you can just totally see it on camera, you can see what it looks like. That, that That is definitely something that's super signature to Kaleidos. So even though sometimes I find their mattes, especially in their five pans to be really fussy, the metallics in their five pans are worth the entire cost of the five pan. And I used a dry, like, Morphe brush. I didn't even use like anything expensive. I didn't wet the brush or anything. I didn't use my finger and that's the payoff that I get. I am going to put an inner corner highlight in, so I'm just keeping this to the middle slash inner middle of my upper lash of my upper eyelid because I'm going to put something else in the inner corner later. I will say the only thing is that these um, metallics, they do fall. <laughs> They can and do fall, so that's the only kind of downside is that sometimes you're looking at looking like a disco ball, but if you're like me and you don't care, then it's like whatever. I'm also gonna take my finger and I'm just gonna really amp up the middle. I feel like using my, the warmth of my finger also helps to kind of press the, the um, this metallic down and prevents fallout later during the day. Like I really just kind of push everything into place. And there you go, suddenly the entire look has just been rescued from the dumpster heap. I'm gonna go ahead and start using this on my lower lash line as well. Very carefully, of course, I don't want to get messy. And then I'm just gonna take my finger and just kind of make sure it's really pressed into my skin. I can only do this because my nails are super short right now. If your nails are long, definitely like figure out a different way to do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on that inner corner highlight I was talking about, and I'm gonna use the shade Firefly, which has a very which is a very green, very, very minty green. I'm gonna put this on the inner corner. I feel like um, the green is definitely still gonna stay analogous to the rest of the eyes, so it won't look too off. And I actually think I'm gonna go ahead and take some of Nova, which looks like it's white with shifts, and I'm gonna use that on the very, very, very inner part, like literally just the very, very, very innermost part, just to add a little bit more dimension. And then finally, I'm gonna take more of Void on the same pencil brush, and I'm just gonna work it on the outer corner of my lower lash line, just to kind of make sure the upper and lower lash line are still, are not too separated. And that is what the eyeshadow is looking like. I'm going to finish up the rest of my face and then I'm going to put on lashes because this kind of look just totally needs. I feel like every look I do with this palette is going to need lashes. Okay, so my lashes are on and I finished up the rest of my makeup and this is what my face is looking like right now. As you can see, the lashes also make a really big difference. I actually am not a super big fan of these lashes. I feel like they are pointing out straight a little bit more than I wish they would. I'm not really a super big fan of these right now. Um, I'm also testing out some other face makeup that I got from YesStyle and I'll be talking about that in a future video, so I'm not gonna talk about that right now. You will see me talking about this 
and some of the footage of me applying the blush and the lip in particular I did actually save for my next upcoming yes style video so you guys will see that soon I think this was really fun to create I definitely you can see that I have a lot of trouble with these deeper colors but that's kind of one of the reasons I got this was because I really want to challenge myself I want to improve my craft I want to do better um, if you're asking about my lenses that I'm wearing today these are gray lenses from O lens I can't remember the name off the top of my head I think it's Russian gray I think is what it's called it's the really dramatic one like Spanish I'm it's either Russian or Spanish I will see you guys for the second look hello and this is the second day of me filming my three looks one palette so today we are doing look number two and as I mentioned earlier my last look was very blue and green based so today's look we're going to be using all of the shades kind of on the bottom basically and we're going to create a look that is far more red and orange for today I did not use any eye primer I ended up taking the Tatcha liquid silk canvas and I kind of took a little dot and I pressed it over my eyelids and I'm going to see how that works. All right, so I'm going to start off with the shade Samus, a nice perfect starter shade to use. <laughs> Definitely super safe. So we're going to start with that and we're going to see what happens. And I'm just using a very big brush to just kind of get it all over my eyelid. I'm not being very picky right now. The brush I'm using is like kind of slanted shaped and it actually means that it fits across my eyelid really well. And we're gonna get pretty intense pretty quickly, so I'm not gonna like fuss too much over this shade. And I just take this color all the way up to basically right under my brow. So that has been laid down, so now I'm gonna go straight into Red Giant and we're just gonna start just going to town. I'm gonna just pack this all over my eyelid. Like we're gonna go as red as we can today. Right, and I'm just packing this on so this is not a true true this is like a darkened like kind of bloody red this is a good kind of red for people who want to wear red eyeshadow but don't want to look like they have an eye infection basically because it's darker than normal red so it's not going to give you that look and minimal fallout I'm just going to wing it out and start blocking out the shape it is blending out so easily and I'm not even using a fluffy blending brush I'm using a denser packing brush for this and yet it still kind of just goes where I'm commanding it to which is really nice So I'm just kind of double checking to make sure that the shape is relatively symmetrical before I really start packing it on. And I'm going to go ahead and use that smaller brush I was using earlier on my lash line. I feel like my right eye, the lash line got out of control because the brush I was using was too big for it. And I somehow managed to make it messier. So right now it's kind of looking a little bit strange so I'm going to go ahead and start working on blending all of this out. I'm going to go back in with Samus. I'm going to use that to buff out the edges of the red. My oldest cat Buster is currently wandering around sniffing everything and whenever he sniffs anything he always is so loud like you can audibly hear him going and making like the sniffy sniffy noises like it's like straight out of cartoon he's just so loud wherever he is you know where he's you know he's gonna be there because he just has no clue what subtle he is and you know for being 17 i think he's allowed to be as loud as he wants but it's just really funny i just know when he's passing by all right so the orange helped diffuse it a lot more and now it's looking like so much better I guess we can just call this like some sort of just like really weird like artistic look I guess that just happens to have a smoked out lower lash line. I don't know, I look really strange but whatever. We'll just pretend that that was like a deliberate decision, right? See like cause now it's making my eyes look almost sad. Like I look really droopy eyed and I look really sad. Like, I'm going to go back in with Red Giant and just kind of pack on a little bit more closer to my lash line. And you can see where I'm starting to diffuse that red that it does kind of start to you can see the pink come through but it's not anything terribly obnoxious. It does not enough to make me like upset or anything. I am now gonna go into um, Cylon, which is the shade right above it. And it is like, has a lot more um, purple to it and it's even darker. And I'm gonna really use that to try and see if I can like deepen up the outer portion. And then we're gonna go in with a metallic. 
and I'm just using this in the very outer part and this shadow is definitely super pigmented but it's also it's also not too hard to control um, you can see I was able to get a fairly clean edge and also blend it out really well. It layers on top of the other shadows really nice. It was not too difficult to use and I feel like it added the depth I was looking for. I always tap my brush off so that I get the excess off and the fallout has been minimal to no fallout for the mattes. So that's what this is looking like now and now we're going to be putting on a metallic and this is always the fun part is getting to pick the metallic so i'm going to be using the shade celestial i was depend uh, i kind of couldn't decide celestial or you're my only hope but i think celestial will kind of be more monochromatic and keep the look looking more analogous and just kind of simple and all within the same color family so we're going to use that and I will use You're My Only Hope for the third look. I'll kind of make that the point shade of the third look for what I do tomorrow. As usual, it's pretty loosely pressed in the pan. And some of it kind of falls off the brush as you're putting it on. This is one, um, I noticed Kaleidos metallics, especially when they're so loosely pressed, would really benefit from a glitter glue if you choose to use one. I'm just going to go ahead and start using my finger since I don't really need this to be super precise. I'm just focusing it on this part of my eyelid. I will say that blue shimmer I used yesterday, Astro, is definitely kind of like the star of the palette. Like I feel like that is the best shade in the entire palette. I know I've only used it twice, but like I feel like that opinion is not really going to change. It is such a great shade. And now I'm going to take that same shade, I guess. Yeah, we'll just take the same shade. We'll kind of keep this look a little bit simple. I'll take that same shade and run it along my lower lash line. I thought about a different shade, but honestly, I think we'll just not be too complicated. And this shade is giving me some fallout. Like I can see I got like one particle right on my nose. If you've ever wanted to hear a Tonkinese cat meow, that's exactly what they sound like apparently. All right, so I've changed my mind. I'm gonna go ahead and use Nova, which I know I used yesterday, and I'm just gonna pop that on the very inner corner of my lash line, and this is literally just to add some contrast. I initially was going to use like a face highlight for my inner corner, but I really wanna try and keep it pure and just use this nothing but this palette for you guys. So I'm just gonna put this on the very inner corner of my lower lash line only, and this just adds that little bit of contrast. That's like probably the only downside to this palette is that there's an inner corner highlight if you're using the blue part, which is the shade right here. But if you're using all of the warmer shades at the bottom row, there's no corresponding inner corner shade for that. It's like, I feel like that's the only thing that's like conspicuously absent. I think this is one of those looks that would benefit from just like a little bit of eyeliner. So I'm going to be using eyeliner. Okay, so eyeliner's on, so I'm gonna go off camera. I'm gonna finish up the rest of my makeup. I'm gonna put on some false lashes. We're gonna finish up the face and then I will be right back. Okay, so this is the finished look and I don't know what happened, but I was cleaning off my lashes and not only did I peel off the glue, but I think I peeled off like an entire layer of the strip. Like I had this long, what looked like a long black hair that I had pulled off. So I think I accidentally pulled off a whole layer of the strip so it made the strip lash super, super flimsy. And so when I put it on, instead of being like nice and upright like this, it's just completely drooping off the side of my eye. Like here, if I come up close, you can see it's really obvious. Like this is the normal lash, this is what it's supposed to look like, but here you can see how it just completely is so droopy and it's like all the way down to the corner. You can see like right here, it's just not even staying up anymore. <sighs> But I was just like, let's just finish this look. I'll try to get an Instagram picture that's like, you know, facing this way so you can't see it. Um, we'll just pretend that everything is fine. I'm gonna have to toss these lashes, I guess, because I like totally ruined them. But this is one of the reasons why I always have to get lashes with such thick strips, because if it's too flimsy, my monolids literally just push them all the way down. But anyways, I definitely really like how it turned out. And with the liner and lashes on, it looks a lot better. Um, I just trimmed my bangs, but I guess I didn't trim them enough because they're so long I'm going to trim them again. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this second look and we're going to move on to the third look, which you will see in a few seconds and I will be working on it tomorrow. 
Hi everyone! So now we are going to be doing the third and final look for the Club Nebula 3 Looks 1 palette. And as you can see, my face, uh, my base complexion and my eyebrows have been done. I recently got the Jaclyn Eye Under Eye Primer and I actually used it as an eye primer for this video to see if the dry eyelids is kind of what's really been tormenting me. So I like super moisturized my eyelid with that and I'm going to see if it helped. Anyways, so I mentioned prior that I want to make sure I use a variety of shades for the look. I actually was wondering if I went from up this diagonal. So I went from here to here to here. So first things first, we're going to start off with the uh, orange. So Samus, which I used in the last look. I'm going to be using that on the inner part of my eye. I'm going to see what happens. And I will say, if you have a like super opaque eye primer that you really like, I definitely would recommend you use this to make colors like Sam's Pop. I like that so far. And I'm like trying to use a mix of my ring light and the natural light, so it's not like studio grade lighting or anything, but I feel like I'm, I'm trying to strike a balance between making the video look nice and professional but also making it look like more just realistic like kind of what you would expect as opposed to making the colors look really good because i have like a super fancy studio setup i feel like by using kind of a mix of both you kind of can see what the makeup looks like okay so that's what it's looking like so now i'm gonna move on i'm actually gonna go ahead and go straight into void and then i'm going to use raw copper kind of between the two because i don't want there to be much raw copper i'm literally just using it to kind of mesh the two shades together so i'm gonna go into void first and I'm gonna put this on my outer corner to start packing it on. I'm really going slowly to minimize fallout. And then you can see I'm already starting to kind of block out that shape. And now I'm gonna slowly bring it closer to the orange, but I'm not actually really marrying them together. You can see I left a little gap. So I'm gonna go into raw copper and I'm going to place it between the two shades. And I am using a fluffy brush for this. So you can see the two shades are being blended together slowly. I'm gonna kind of also push some of that raw copper into the void to kind of cover up any potential patchiness that I created. I'm like really super looking down to make sure that I can get the whole eyelid nice and blended. And now I'm gonna go back into Samus on the other side of this brush and just kind of dust it back over raw copper. I'm going to take void on it and we're gonna start working on blending the void side working on the edges as well and now i'm really focusing on this upper edge right here i like how defined the outer boundary is so i don't want to mess that up too much all right i'm gonna go into a very tiny amount of queen of blades in hopes of using that to really further diffuse the edges and kind of just add a little bit of warmth to it You can see that that helped a little bit and it just kind of adds a little bit of color interest. I'm still using um, Queen of Blades, by the way. So that's what it's looking like now. It's looking uh, way better. So now I'm going to quickly just go back in with a uh, void and there's a couple spots I need to touch up on. I definitely think this eyeshadow is performing a lot better for me today with my eyelids being so hydrated. So I definitely think hydrating my eyes first was a good idea. So now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of try to do all of this on the other eye. So now we're going to work on the lower lash line and I did mention wanting to make the lower lash line something else to make it like extra colorful. So I'm going to be using a tiny little pencil brush so that way I can get super precise. I'm going to go in with gravity first since it's lighter. We're going to put it down on the inner part. And I'm going to leave a little space right here for an inner corner highlight. So starting here and I'm taking it nice and slow. This is a really good yellow green shade. Okay, so that shade's been put down and I am going to 
use Cylon. I've decided it actually might be nicer to have a darker shade, not Red Giant, something like even darker to match with Boyd, so. And I'm kind of very lightly connecting it to Boyd just to ensure that everything looks nice and smooth. And now we're gonna start pushing it into gravity. And because it's a little more purple, you're gonna see the mud is going to look almost brown, like a, a, a more flattering earthy shade of brown as opposed to just straight like a very like gray brown. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit more warm in tone. That's just kind of how yellow green and red purple tend to mix from my history of working with actual paints. And now it's time to move on to my favorite part, which is going to be packing on all those metallics. It might be like, it might look better if I use Nebula, which I don't think I've used yet either. Okay, so let me use Nebula on the upper eyelid, and then I'll take your My Only Hope on the lower one. Let's do that, because I've already used Firefly. And we're gonna use this to really help hide any muddiness in the upper lash line. And it's very, very focused. I'm not putting it across like the whole eyelid or anything. Yeah, this one is like super firmly pressed into the pan, so you really have to work hard to put on the layers. Compared to Astro, it definitely feels like it was packed in a lot more. I'm not really so sure why, but I guess that's just kind of how it is. So now we're gonna go in with the uh, You're My Only Hope, which I haven't used yet, so I'm super excited. It almost gives me like multi-chrome vibes. I'll be honest, it definitely reminds me of, it definitely is giving me like super Cleonid vibes just because of the, um, way it just sits under on top of these mats. I really need to like put this shade on my upper eyelid. It does have some fallout, I'm getting kind of messy. And lastly, I am going to take Nova as an inner corner highlight. And this is just obviously, just to have my inner corner highlight, gotta have it. This is the finished eye look, so I'm going to go and add on my lashes and then I will finish the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. So this is the final look. Um, my hair, if I like put my hair up before it fully dries, it'll get like a really big crimp in it. So my hair is up right now because it has a giant crimp in the middle. So. I'll have to wait until my hair gets washed again before I can like have it down and have it look nice but um so you can just kind of <laughs> I mean I tried to get it to look okay but you know I you guys know I don't know how to style my hair like at all so whatever but um but yeah this is the finished look I have on a warm colored blush to kind of match with the orange and the metallic and then I have a warm lip to match with it as well but I didn't want to do like a straight orange lip because then that would have kind of drawn attention away from my eyes so I had a fairly toned down warm toned but still like warm from Romand and it is from their summer collection I think it's it's like called like Bernie nude or something it's that color and then I put a little bit of red right in the center for a gradation lip because I still really liked the idea of having some red on my lips to balance with the face like I wanted the lips to be a little bit darker but I didn't want a full red lip because that would have clashed with everything else so that's what we have on and then I have um, highlighter blush and everything I do want to mention the highlighter really quick it is from Becca it is the shade lilac geode and this is such a beautiful highlighter like it's too dark for my skin if I don't have blush on so as a blush topper it matches so well with any kind of warm tone blush that I have on and here's what it looks like. It has a pink to orange shift and it's just so, so pretty. I definitely recommend you guys get this if it's not sold out already. Try and brush them to the side so you guys can kind of see what the eyes are looking like. Super colorful. I definitely have a lot of colors going on right now. I have the Doe Lashes in Morning Dew. They are really pretty. They're kind of swallowed up by this look. I almost could have used a longer pair or a thicker pair so that they really showed up. But honestly, with this, you can still super, super see the eyeshadow, so I don't mind. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed all three looks that I did with this palette. I feel like I definitely got to be out of my comfort zone, try some colors that usually freak me out, and I definitely could recommend this if you guys can ever get your hands on it. Um, I know it's not available anymore, so for those of you who do have it, I hope this can kind of give you some inspiration to bust it out and use it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!